Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Larry LeFerry for WCTV, the all-volunteer cable access group from the township of Washington. And tonight we have a very, very special sports show. We are going to preview the 2020 Bergen County Jamboree with committee members. We're going to have a deep look into the 24 teams that comprise this year's Jamboree. We're going to talk about the teams, some of the players, some of the coaches that make up this wonderful tournament. And we're going to give you the dates and the times of the games that are going to be played over the next month. February is uh, Jamboree month, and with me is my partner of over 37 years calling these games is John Francola. John, another year, Jamboree. February is Jamboree. Oh, it's fantastic. To me, it's the best time of the year. You got that month and a half. You watch game, a lot of games. They can listen to our voices. Not this well, year not as too much. much maybe. But not. <laughs> well, we'd like to introduce the uh, committee members who are up here, and we'll start from left to right for our camera people so they know which way to go. This is, of course, people recognize him, Paul Pluglis, and to his left would be Rookie Corcoran, and John Ryan is to his, uh, his left. And gentlemen, want to thank you for coming up and talking about the Jamboree. Paul, another year, the Jamboree. Um, you sat down on Wednesday. Again, there are some people that tune in for the first time. Explain overall how you set the meeting up and how you get there starting sometime in December. Well, uh, thanks for having us, fellas, again. Uh, I think this is my 20th year on the show. Oh, uh, you've been you, you got tenure. I got tenure, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see how much my pension's going to be. Gonna Not as much as we get. <laughs> We're going to double it today. <laughs> Looking for my, my, my new pension here. Um, so, um, uh, actually, we, our committee, and I uh, have to uh, recognize, uh, we have Rookie here, of course. Rookie is our uh, new co-chairman of the committee. Uh, of course, Rookie's dad, uh, Mickey, the great Mickey Cochran, was one of the founding fathers of the tournament, back uh, going all the way back to um, 1951. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this is our 64th. If the numbers don't exactly add up, it's because there was a few years in the 60s and the 70s where, uh, uh, due to state regulations, we couldn't have the tournament. But uh, 64 years, pretty much one of the oldest tournaments in the state. And um, uh, it doesn't work unless I have uh, a fabulous group <coughs> of fellows. Uh, John Ryan puts in amazing hours on the road, driving all around. Uh, you know, uh, John lives in Pennsylvania, and that's how much it means to him. And that gives you an indication of the dedication of this group. Um, Ed Cromer, uh super job again, Ed. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Ed couldn't be here. He's in the, uh, has just checked into the witness protection program. <laughs> so, um, him and Leon Steinberg. Yes, <laughs> yes. Leon Steinberg. Um, uh, Lee's, of course, <laughs> is, is uh, great. Lee, Lee has the honor this year of uh, his son is a player on the Don Bosco roster, which mm -hmm. uh, Le Leon's pretty excited about. We have uh, Chris Annabelle out of Garfield, longtime Garfield coach, now right. principal down here. Um, and Chris couldn't make it tonight because he just had a, Wife and he just had their third child, so uh, uh, he's running around. There's Lee. Oh yeah, there's Leon from last year. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> Leon's Lee, Lee picture from last year. Look, he hasn't aged. He yeah, left his hair. Look yeah, the hair. He doesn't even comb it. <laughs> What's wrong with him? And um, our rookie of the year this year, we added a, a another gentleman to the committee, uh, Joe Dionisio, uh recent coach of uh, Demarest, and of course, longtime coach and player at uh, Bergen Catholic. And uh, Joe blew us away the other night at the meeting. He was uh, uh, extremely well prepared and, and ready to go. Um, we want to thank uh, the BCCA, Burton County Coach Association, uh, and the wonderful job that, uh, that they do supporting this tournament. Um, we'll get into a few things in a second or two about uh, uh, new changes in the tournament. Um, we also have uh, our liaisons, Chris Gaskin uh, out of uh, Ridgefield Park and Mike Sabula out of Hasbrook Heights who come to our meetings and, and oversee the uh, operation. We have uh, Pete DeFranco, who is again gonna do our officiating oh. uh, officials assignments. And uh, we have Jim McConville, who uh, uh, does all of our statistics and uh, he's our uh, kind of our historian. Uh, so- um, You had some all changes, all right? All that then? said, we yeah. had some changes. We had um, uh, several meetings with the BCCA uh, uh, who are tuned into 
what the uh, coaches in the county are uh, interested in. And uh, the biggest change was we went from um, a non-fixed number of teams that had gone into the tournament to a fixed number of 24 teams that would get in. We are maintaining our uh, 650 winning percentage. So any team that has uh, at the cutoff, which was uh, games through this past Tuesday counted, and those uh, teams that had acquired a 650 record or better were automatic qualifiers. And we had 20, 21 of those, 21. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, that left us now, which we hadn't had in the past, uh, a fixed number of at-large bids. There were three to get us to the 24. So we had uh, three at-large You couldn't go to bids. 25, 26? You couldn't add? Uh, no, this was, this was something the BCCA wanted to try, and they wanted us to stay, uh, uh, try for a 2014 yeah. field. Um, I think we had, did we have 25 once, maybe? We did. We might have had, yeah. twice we had 25. Uh, most of the times we have less than 24. Last year I think we had 21. I think yeah. we had 21 last year. Um, so they wanted us to try a fixed, um, uh, a fixed field, and um, so we're going to try it and see what happens. So how did you, how do you like it so far as of now? You think it'll work? <coughs> Anybody want to handle that? Well, I, I mean, you know, I'm going to put <coughs> you guys on the spot, but you know, it, it, we're going to try it. <laughs> we're going to try it. What do you think, Rook? Yeah, uh, you know, it it worked out this year r really well for us, but uh, we can see some bumps down the road, and it's something we got to figure out. So when you meet <coughs> the coaches, you'll just tell them these are the problems we had and try to work them out going forward. That yeah, you know, we look, it was nice getting a couple extra teams in there. It was also nice in the past that we had the ability to either add or subtract teams. Um, we just thought that uh, we wanted to do what the coaches asked us to do, and this year was kind of a little bellwether for us, and it, it worked out. A little scary at the end, but it did work out for us. John, it's really difficult. I mean, I, I get an idea of how difficult it is, just an idea, but to sit there and, and get all this put together, and you've done this you know, long, like you talk, this has to be, and people don't understand this, and I want to get this idea across, this has to be very difficult to set this tournament up. You start in December looking at all the teams. That's probably the easy part. Now you got to sit down and figure out who's in and where do we see them. It's got to be very difficult. Talk a little about that. Go ahead. It's always up to interpretation by people on the outside looking in. Uh, the one thing I'll tell you is that the committee not only sees teams, uh, we see every team that has applied and, and usually multiple There's also a lot of data behind the scenes that we share um, in the beginning, you know, once a week as we get closer to the cutoff, multiple times a week, uh, where we're updating teams' records, strength of schedule. We know when everyone's playing, where they're playing, and so we have discussions ongoing, which makes it a little bit easier when it comes down to the cutoff, but oftentimes there's a number of teams that will call uh, on the bubble as most basketball people know what that term uh, means, that are, you know, might have a chance of getting in, whether as an automatic qualifier or as an at-large. And oftentimes it comes down to the last one or two or three games they're playing to determine whether or not they're an automatic qualifier. I was watching uh, it going, and I thought that a lot of teams that Tuesday, that, as you would say, the bubble, there were teams on Tuesday could have gone either way, in or right. out. That's correct. So not only do you determine who's going to get in, um, it becomes, it can be a difficult process to determine where to seed them. You know, once we select the 24 teams, now we have to put them in <laughs> the order that we believe is best. But with 24 teams, though, you sh it should be a lot easier having 24, shouldn't it? I mean, because in reality, the more you have, you know, <laughs> and they're saying they want to have 24, so you're going to have, at one point, you, you may have had to go back and tell one of the schools when you only had 21 or 22, hey, look, this you don't have the 650 or you don't have, and you're out. But with 24, you're going to have teams that probably will not have that 650, right? But you'll probably still have teams that are on the bubble. Oh, you'll always have the bubble. So <laughs> even if you have 30, there'd be bubbles. Well, our, our concern this year with the, with the 24 came down to the last night. And there was a, a scenario, and it came close, 
where we would have had, for the first time in the history of the tournament, 24 automatic qualifiers. And with 24 automatic qualifiers, that would mean then that the, some of the at-large teams, some powerhouse at-large teams, nine. some traditional champion year-after-year year teams would not be in a tournament. <laughs> that would have been nice. I saw know. that. I, I was drinking coffee, and I looked down, and I saw that, and I went, oh, my God. I don't want to be part of this <laughs> committee. I said, oh, my God. Well, and I know exactly what you were talking. I'm saying, yeah. Ooh, if this, 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 <laughs> these three teams win, this could be very interesting. 24 exactly are in and everybody else is out. <laughs> That's exactly correct. And, and that was a point of oh. discussion. Mm. You know, we, we've said uh, many times on this stage that uh, uh, this committee uh, is really, it, it amps up, you, John, you, you said December. It amps up in, in, uh, in December, but really we're going all year round. We are talking about it all year round. We're planning and doing all those things. And, and one of the great parts about being on this committee is that we get along real well. We enjoy talking yeah. hoops and seeing games and, and, and all of that. But um, that scenario was discussed extensively uh, leading up to the, uh, to the selection. I so, uh, you know, uh, we, had, uh, <laughs> we had 29 teams apply. And uh, always the uh, toughest part for me personally is when we get down to those last two or three that don't get in. You know, the other teams, you know, they, they could complain about their seeds. Uh, but they're in. Right. They have a chance to play uh, to play their mm -hmm. way um, through the tournament. But those few that, that we have to make that decision, and now the 24 says, okay, boom, mm -hmm. that's the that's decision. It, yeah. You know, so um, th that part of it was uh, not uh, as easy. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit tougher uh, getting into that getting mm -hmm. into that part. The, the last thing I want to talk about, then we'll get into this. Uh, we'll start with the 24th team and go up to the one. How much time did you put in? Uh, you put hours in December till Tuesday. How many hours you worked on it on Wednesday? Where the, you all sat around. How many well, man hours? Well, all day Wednesday. All day Wednesday. <laughs> all day Wednesday, even though we're not sitting in the same room until 6 o'clock. Uh, and by the way, JR pr provides us with his office. We have a nice conference room. JR had the, we're, we're moving into the, I, I was kidding, I said we're moving into the 20th century. You know, we had the big, uh, 85 inch screen. big 85 inch screen up there and <laughs> JR had all of the teams in different colors and it, it, was, it was good. You know, and, and, and I'm reminded often when I do this, uh, when we do this, uh, uh, of the, uh, the NCAA uh, tournament, right? You know, and seeing their room, and you know, everybody's got a laptop. Well, we didn't have everybody with a laptop, but we were pretty close this year. <laughs> everybody with a laptop. Jr.'s got the big screen, and uh, you know, and and we're going at it. And uh, it, it brings me to another point. Um, the few teams that were the at-large teams, okay, like the NCAA's, those teams, um, when they fit into the tournament. And the NCAAs, they fit in 11 line, 12 line, right. you know. And pe some people would say, well, if they were the last teams in, why aren't they the last teams on the seed line? Well, that's because some of the automatic qualifiers uh, don't have the resume that those last couple of at-large teams do, mm -hmm. which is why they could, they could move up on that, uh, on that seed line. And, you know, that, that of course, becomes an issue, uh, too. And, and uh, one other thing. Uh, for the audience who uh, wonders about our, our selection and our criteria. Um, we figured that there was about 10 or 11 criteria items that we have got to consider for each of the teams. So obviously you go strength of schedule, quality wins, quality losses, uh, uh, the eye test, uh, position in their league, PowerPoints, you know, there's, I'm m missing half of them, but there's, there's 10 or 11 items, head-to-head -head competition, uh, common opponents, common yeah. opponents uh, and independent games, independent games. How, how's their independent schedule, how are they doing recently. So all of these different criteria points are applied to each of the, the 29 teams, down to 24 teams, and then the seeding process. Uh, unfortunately, when a team doesn't get in or a team doesn't particularly enjoy their seeding position, they're going to pick and choose from that. 10, 11 yeah. items, and they're going to say, well, we beat this team head to head. Well, that is one criteria item. There's no question about that. But we have to consider. But it's not the only criteria. It's not the yeah. only one. And we have to consider all of them. And we'll see as we go through the. Uh, and then, Paul, the other the thing, too, is the BCCA asks us not to have teams Excellent play each job. other in <laughs> round one that have faced each other already in the season. 
So, yeah. you're, you're so sometimes you're we have to adjust balance. the seed up or down a slot or two to accommodate the BCCA request, and it's not necessarily a true one through 24 the way we would lay it out without that criteria. Yeah, I, I, I was aware of that a number of years ago when Paul brought yeah. that up, and I, I just looked at it and said, oh my God, you, we, you have a wonderful board. No, we can't make that. <coughs> and when you move that, you have to move others, right? So oh, yes. it's, like, it's like a domino effect. It, it, it is. And so that adds some time onto our evening at the towards the end. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and I bet a lot of coaches will call you up. How could you have me six? I should be two, or I should oh, be well, ten. <laughs> Unfortunate, Paul does. gets all those calls. <laughs> <laughs> Send it all to him. <laughs> all right, I got a couple. I got a couple. Well, I, I just wanted everybody to understand that the process of picking these twenty-four teams and then seeing them is a long and grueling process that takes a lot of time, a lot of thought, a lot of effort. And it's put in, and you guys put a tremendous amount of work in, and, and it shows on the court. So I just want everybody to know that the work that the committee does is, uh, is appreciated by the basketball fans, really. It really the, is. The data that we go through is amazing. The stuff that we have at our hands to, to go through, you know, goes sometimes 10, 11, 12 criteria deep to spot people. So we, we're pretty proud that we do our homework on this stuff and uh, the amount of data that we go through and it starts all the way through it's not that last day that we go right. through it we're we're preparing as this thing goes and you get down to the last day and, and you guys said well there's a couple of teams that <coughs> may, you know may have to win to get in and all that kind of stuff so the minute we step in the room we have up-to-date data that we go through so you're all yeah. prepared, and then it's just a matter yeah, of yeah. fitting everything into the puzzle. Right. To Paul's point, you know, the, the, the cutoff was Tuesday night. So we have results from Tuesday that we're inputting into our spreadsheets to be prepared for Wednesday. So we have to do a last minute And tell update. the truth, Tuesday night, the game is <laughs> over, 8.30, 9 o'clock. You started working on it. You started oh, yeah, thinking yeah. already Tuesday night for your Wednesday night meeting, correct? A absolutely. Yeah. So and I just we want were, the people to we understand. We were trading spreadsheets and emails mon uh, Wednesday throughout the day when most of us were supposed to be this working. Is, this is <laughs> something that you don't get. Different yeah. people yeah. have an idea. They talk about the jam. We, we give everybody in depth of actually yeah. what really goes goes into picking the teams. And to, f and to further Rookie's point, I even teams that schedule out of area or out of state, out of region teams, we research those teams in their schedules. Yeah. So your sleep is nil. Uh, <laughs> you this is a very better. busy time for us. There's very no stone time. unturned. No. And some of these folks still have, actually, they have paying jobs. You know, unlike, <laughs> well, yeah. unlike us guys over here on this side of the Well, we're very happy that, that you got this. We told people exactly what goes on. We just don't have a, 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 a show where you come on, you read the 24 teams, say thank you very much, we'll see you uh, Saturday. We want to make sure we go very deep into how this is done and the amount of work that's done. And Paul, just to reiterate, it doesn't end when you finish the Jamboree in, Oct in, in, in February at the, at the Rotman. You start again looking for next year and getting ready. And uh, we, go out the, we go out that night and, and take a deep breath and then a month or so later we're having another meeting yeah. right yeah. we have another meeting at, in probably April or yeah. someplace around there we have a you know we, we give ourselves a chance to digest a little bit and think about all the things that went well what didn't go well what do we have to do and you know at, at, for example I mean this year we have uh, uh, to have our uh, we have to send out a shout out to uh, Hackensack and their administration mm -hmm. for uh, allowing us to to um, use their facility for the semifinals this year because of conflicts uh, at FDU. They have uh, four games on Sunday and then they have four practices they have to have on Saturday. I'm sorry, yeah, they have two games on Sunday, four teams. They have uh, uh, four practices on Saturday, so we can't have our semifinals there this year. So we had to go out and find another place. <laughs> and, and it has to be a venue that would accommodate the large crowd you were exactly. expecting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you can't have it in a, can't have it in a small no, you place. you can't. You turn away everybody. I, I remember yeah, exactly. the games at Paramus. You had them standing outside. You just Bill Sims get them was in. banging yeah. on the door to get I remember that. Ooh. I remember getting that, uh, that word inside. People came inside and said, you know, Phil Sims is outside and he can't get in. <laughs> What about the seating at Hackensack? What is it, about 2,000 um, or? Yeah, it's about, uh, uh, well, 2,100, okay. you know, this wide. But the, the winter coach and, and everything, you get it down probably a little less than 2,000. Um, JR had counted seats at FDU. And, and FDU and, and Ramapo. And Ramapo. Yeah. And 
it, it'll be, it should be fine. It should I be think fine, plus, yeah. you know, at this point, it is. <laughs> it's it's yeah. going to be there. <laughs> it'll, yeah. it'll work. You'll make it work. Yeah. You'll fit those seeds in, you'll make that work. Yeah. Okay, Paul, the show now turns to you and to look. Uh, okay, well, uh, what, I'd like to do, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to give you a 30-second uh, little history. We said this is the 50, uh, 64th tournament, and it started in 1951. And um, just real quick, in 1951, Holy Trinity, uh, which was in Hackensack, Hackensack I believe, <coughs> uh, beat North Arlington in the final, 37-27. Uh, and uh, and, and <laughs> that, that was at F uh, Fairleigh Dickinson, but it wasn't at the same Fairleigh Dickinson. That was uh, what is now Felician uh, College in Rutherford. So that was 1951. North Arlington lost to Holy Trinity, becomes the first champ. Uh, I want to go back 20 years ago for personal reasons. 20 years ago was the last time we had four publics in the, uh, in the finals, the 44th tournament. We had uh, Hackensack, Teaneck, Englewood, and Waldwick in the final with Englewood beating mm -hmm. Teaneck in the championship. 10 years ago, uh, Paramus Catholic beat Bergen Catholic uh, in a great final by four points uh, at the Rothman Center. Uh, and that was, uh, that was uh, 2010. And of course, now we're up to the 64th. We did so most of them except the 51 game. <laughs> well, you guys were you guys were in the stands though, right? 51. No, we were upstairs on the uh, in the the first one uh, 20 years ago. We might have been upstairs, but from then on we were downstairs. The uh, 10 oh and the uh, the, t the 2000 and the 10 we were downstairs. I came over on the on the boat on the <laughs> boat <laughs> in 51. Yeah. And, and we're still paying for that trip. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's paying that price that I came here. Yeah, we're still paying for that trip. <laughs> All right, Paul, you and and and, and Rook and uh, John, take it away. Start with number 24. St. Mary's and go to one idol will follow the bouncing ball. Okay, so uh, we're going to run it down from 24 uh, to number one, as uh, Larry said. Uh, number 24 is the St. Mary's Gales, um, where uh, John Ryan used to coach back in the day. Uh, St. Mary's is right now 10 and, uh, well, by the way, the, the numbers I'm going to give you, most of them are through Tuesday night. Okay. So we didn't update after the selection, but uh, as of Tuesday night, St. Mary's was 10 and 5. They were seven and four. They're an NJIC team. There we have the Big North, which is the larger schools. We have the NJIC, which is the smaller schools. Uh, St. Mary's in fourth place in the Meadowlands Division. Uh, you may remember not that long ago, they had a great run to the semifinals in 2013. Right, yeah. uh, a couple of their good wins were against Crystal Ray in Manchester. They won five of their last six. Uh, JR, you want to jump in? They lost to <coughs> tournament team uh, Leonia, Becton, and Hasbrook Heights. And of course, they are coached <laughs> by uh, Brian Gassione, who's been around the county as a player and as a coach for some time. And, he, and when he was in CYO basketball, I was uh, one of his coaches. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and St. Mary's, um, I'm sorry here, excuse me a sec, but St. Mary's is going to play Pascack Hills, Pascac Hills tomorrow at 2.30 at uh, Westwood. The school Westwood. over here. That, What's that the school little over school here? we know. The school yeah. over here. You guys know this school? <laughs> Westwood. At Westwood. So St. Mary's plays uh, Pascat Kills. That would be the 9-24 game. That's at, uh, uh, what does that say, 2.30 <laughs> at Westwood. Okay, <laughs> number three, uh, we have the Midland Park Panthers out of the uh, NJIC Patriot Division. Midland Park making their first appearance in uh, 17 years. Wow. Coached by Adam Sidro, who got his guys together the other day and said, uh, how many of you guys were around 17 years ago? And not many hands went up. <laughs> Most of his team was not. They are tied for third with Creskill <coughs> in the NJIC Patriot Division. They have, uh, uh, you know, a, a young, strong, big named Luberoff, six foot seven, uh, who leads the way with them. Um, they have uh, uh, won seven, uh, six of the last seven coming into tournament. Uh, they lost to a uh, tournament team, Saddle River Day, who's very good, twice, but go to Creskill. And um, they had a great uh, double overtime win to ensure their at-large bid over uh, a tough Park Ridge team. Park Ridge, who just missed, was, a, was an applicant. They just missed. And uh, they also have a real good guard named Brett Murray, uh, who can uh, penetrate and dish and runs the show for them. So Midland Park, first time in in 17 years. Wow. It's a good <coughs> story. Good like story. It. Yeah, love those stories. Okay, number uh, uh, and Midland Park will play. You guys help me out with this. Midland Park will play number ten Fairlawn at uh, this school over here again. Which again, that, that, that one over Westwood. There? Westwood. Westwood. Westwood, Westwood. Westwood at eleven o'clock uh, tomorrow. <laughs> We're looking forward to uh, 
That would be uh, the first of a triple header at first, Westwood. First yeah. of a triple header at Westwood, uh, the Fairlawn Cutters against the Midland Park Panthers. Um, number 22 is the Becton Wildcats, who come in at 10 and 4. Uh, six and three, they're in third place in the NJIC Meadowlands division. They have two real good players, um, uh, Benamore and uh, uh, Mitterrotondo, and uh, they are both uh, capable of 20 a night. So you can, get, you can get 40 out of two of your guys, you're gonna be in, uh, in most games, you know. A and uh, uh, those two guys are ball handlers too, so, so uh, uh, they're gonna be a, a tough out. They're led by uh, Coach Danny Balaban. And he does a great job down there, really enthusiastic. Uh, uh, nice wins. They beat Hasbro Kites in the tournament. They beat St. Mary's in the tournament. Uh, Hasbro Kites got them back. Hasbro Kites uh, uh, beat them. Uh, and uh, uh, they also lost to Sea Caucus, who's strong, and Patterson Charter, who is very strong. Guys, jump in. Anything you want to say yeah. about any of these things, You're doing really well. Yeah, I, un I understand. You're on a roll. <laughs> yeah. You're on a roll now. Go ahead. Don't stop. <laughs> Next year, rookies here. And when do they play Paul Becton? Oh, yeah, thanks, game. JR. Thanks. <laughs> Stay on top of that. Uh, Becton plays number 11 Ridgefield at Bergen Catholic tomorrow at 1245. That's the uh, middle game. The middle that's game the middle of game of the triple header at Bergen Catholic. So that should be a good game. Um, Leonia Lions, uh, led by uh, Coach uh, Steve Herget. Uh, they are 10 and 2 uh, overall, 8 and 1. They're tied for first place in the Liberty Division with uh, uh, Dwight Englewood, uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, this is their first appearance since 2009. Um, their quality wins would be uh, over St. Mary's in the tournament, Sea Caucus. And uh, again, Sea Caucus is uh, out of county, but they're a very strong team. Uh, they lost to this school over here. What's this school over here? Uh, Westwood. Westwood. <laughs> and they also lost to uh, How to many Dwight teams Angle. have played? <laughs> and they lost to uh, and they lost to Dwight Englewood. And one of the things that uh, that uh, uh, one of the things. Leonia <laughs> Lions, okay. There's the Lions. There's the Lions. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, you know we we see when we look at these is is um, obviously the teams in their leagues have uh, uh, teams from out of the county. You know, so for example, Fairlawn as as a tournament team this year is the only Bergen team in their league. So most of their games are against non-county tournaments, which right. uh, we we got to go out and. <laughs> And find out how good they are. And right now, and uh, Leonia is a senior heavy team. Uh, they've got really yes. five good, well-rounded yep. starters. It's a it's a well-rounded team, and they were uh, winners of the of the Christmas tournament. They were in the Jack Stone Shootout down at St. Mary's. You're predicting a uh, possible win by Leonia. <laughs> we can bet on that game. Well, Leonia, <laughs> Leonia opens up tomorrow. Uh, uh, the middle game at this school over here. Oh, I, oh uh, another game at that another school. Another game. There's a lot of games. Gotta, we got to plug them. Dan Favino, <laughs> what a great job. And, of course, uh, uh, Principal Principal Conley over there, who was on our committee. Ooh. I remember. Principal yes. Conley was on our committee. Uh, they were gracious enough to offer their new gym uh, for the tournament, so we really should give them a shout-out, as well as uh, 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 Lorenzo Barada over at Indian Hills. And, of course, Brendan uh, uh, McGovern at... Uh, Bergen at Bergen Catholic, Catholic you know, uh, mm. following in his dad's, uh, his late dad's footsteps. Um, so the middle game mm. over at Westwood will be, um, I'm sorry, uh, the middle game will be Leonia and Dwight Morrow, okay? And they're neighbors, which is nice. Yeah. So it's a little, uh, yeah. little sectional game, I guess. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Pretty yeah. neat. Right. And number 20, okay, so number 20 is uh, the Dwight Englewood Bulldogs. They are 10 and 3 and 8 and 1. They're in first place in the NJIC Liberty Division. They are tied with uh, Leonia. And um, uh, they feature two, two big guys, uh, David Magger and uh, Jaden Lamond. They are coached in the first year, I believe. I think Bob, Bob Rudolph was a coach last year, right? Yes. And uh, so their first year coach, Alex Kuchar, who's got the team right back in the tournament, as they were last year. Um, former assistant coach <coughs> at St. Mary's. Former assistant coach <laughs> at St. Mary's. There you go. Um, they, uh, they, as I suggested, they beat Leonia, uh, that they are tied with first place for in their division. They lost to Ridgewood, St. Raymond's, and Sea Caucus. Um, again, at 10 and 3, that's a, an automatic uh, qualifier. And Dwight Englewood will play at Indian Hills tomorrow in the second game at 2:30 against Saddle River Day School. So those are the. Dwight Englewood Bulldogs. Garfield. Garfield. The Garfield <laughs> Boilermakers. Our great friends down at Garfield are, are wonderful, wonderful folks. I've always enjoyed going.
going there and working with those folks. Uh, Garfield is 10 and 4. Uh, I have them as 8 and 2 in their uh, first place in their uh, NJIC Colonial Division. This is their first appearance in five years. Uh, they are coached by uh, Chris Storms, who uh, does a great job over there, um, following in a line of, of pretty good coaches down at Garfield over the many, many years. Garfield, one of the older schools in the county. Um, Elias Cherry, 6'5", senior. Uh, uh, Nakey Graham, 6'2", senior, are two of their uh, leading players. They are very athletic. They are very aggressive. Um, you know, they're a real tough out. Um, they beat uh, Elmwood Park twice. They beat Wayne Hills. They beat Rutherford. They beat Hawthorne, all uh, uh, over 500 in quality <laughs> programs. Their losses were to uh, Bogota. They lost to uh, Manchester. They split with Rutherford, actually, and they also lost to Passaic County Tech, which, of course, is a big school. Uh, Garfield Boilermakers. Graham <laughs> is a 1,000-point scorer, and um, Cherry is uh, averages double-double. So they got two <coughs> kids that can get after it a little bit. It's going to be a nice team. <coughs> Uh, number 18, and, and Garfield is going to play Dumont, which really looking forward to that game. It's, uh, that's going to be a couple of real <coughs> athletic teams going at each other at Bergen Catholic at uh, 230. Yes. A lot of athleticism in, in, <coughs> in that game. Um, you know, and unfortunately, we have three sites. <laughs> I wish I could see all these games. <laughs> um, you know, you build up to this, and then you, you, you can only be at one place, right? Um, okay, number 18 are the Creskill Cougars, uh, perennial. Uh, NJIC uh, powerhouse led by uh, Dan Agaro, and they are nine and five uh, overall, six and four. They are tied for third place in the Patriot Division. Um, they've got uh, three players that jump out at me anyway: uh, Kyle McGee Jr., six three; uh, Aiden Faulner, uh, five ten senior; and um, uh, Davis uh, <coughs> Rogovich, six two senior. They also have. Uh, uh, Radovich, oh. yeah. and a uh, uh, little shout out to Radovich's dad. He's a uh, works for I think CBS Sports and just won an Emmy Award. Uh, <laughs> you know, you got to look for that. And we had him on camera when they won that game against Hackensack when he was crying. Oh, there and you go. <laughs> so he was in. He's from Croatia. There you go. He's, He's six three. <laughs> six three senior. So a little plug on Croatia. Yeah, they got uh, they got a bunch of guys in that six three, six four. You know, rugged. Of course, Creskill has always going way back to, to when Marty Rivard was a coach there before uh, Mike Dodo, they always play very aggressive man-to-man, -man, very, very tough and solid fundamentals, very difficult uh, to play against them. Uh, they made that run you were talking about in 2018. Uh, they are the last NJIC team to get to the semifinals. Great uh, game against Hackensack. Yeah. They won that. That was a game of the ages, I think. Yeah, yeah. What a, yeah really fabulous, fabulous really game. Uh, they, w they have wins against Riverdale, Midland Park, and uh, uh, Park Ridge. They avenged uh, a loss to Park Ridge on day one, uh, and they also lost to Pascac Hill, Saddle River Day, and Bogota. So those are the Creskill Cougars and they play at Creskill. Uh, Mawa. Mawa. What time, Paul? One o'clock at Indian Hills. Uh, number 17, the Hasbrook Heights Aviators, 11-2 in first place at 9-1 in, in the uh, Meadowlands Division of the NJIC. Uh, they are coached. Actually, they're second place. They're behind. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Patterson. Patterson, Patterson, Patterson see, Patterson that's the show. Yeah, uh, you're right. You, you got me. You got me the other night with that too. I missed <laughs> that the other night. Uh, they are in second place in that division. Behind uh, Pat, their one loss was to Pat, uh, in the division was to Patterson right. Charter. Uh, they are led by uh, Mike Sabula, who uh, was a great player for Heights, great scorer, great shooter. And he does a great job as a coach. He's, as I mentioned his name earlier, he's a BCC liaison. Uh, they beat Becton twice, St. Mary's, uh, and they also had a nice win over Rutherford. They lost to Bergen, and as John pointed out, uh, Patterson Charter. Uh, Kunga Searing. Yep. How's that a name for That's a player? A Kunga. Kunga. Kunga Searing. He's good. 6'6", six, <laughs> six, 11th grader, very athletic big. I mean, can dribble the ball, he, he, he can jump, he, <coughs> he's very agile and dominant, uh, and, and he's a <coughs> difference maker. Uh, they are going to play, uh, where is Hasbro Kites? They're going to play <coughs> Bogota <coughs> tomorrow, <coughs> uh, first game at, um, uh, at uh, Bergen Catholic, <coughs> and that's going to be another game to watch. You know, uh, that 16-17 <coughs> game is almost always a good, a good matchup. 
So those are the Hasbrookites aviators, and as I suggested, they will play Berg, uh, they will play at Bergen Catholic tomorrow at one o'clock at eleven o'clock against the Bogota Bucks, <coughs> and the Bogota Bucks are twelve and two. Bogota Bucks are good every year. Why? Jay Mahoney. Jay Mahoney, one of the, uh, the second leading uh, winningest coach in Bergen County, uh, behind uh, retired recently retired Marty Rivard. Uh, Jay's got over five hundred wins. I know, mm -hmm. probably closing on six hundred wins. Yep. Uh, and they are second in the Patriot Division of the NJIC to Saddle River Day. Uh, I wrote down on my notes here, always, they are always, <coughs> they're always there as long as Jay's coaching. Hopefully uh, Jay's able to coach tomorrow. And we <laughs> wish Jay the best, because uh, Jay had an accident the other day. He got, oh. he got uh, uh, whacked in the head by a, uh, a, a ball that shot off of uh, the rim. Somebody shot it, hit the rim, hit him oh. in the head. And he's, uh, he's uh, in the concussion protocol. Oh. Uh -oh. So he did not go to the game uh, last night at Midland Park. Or last week, Joe and I were at the game, uh, home game against Cresskill. Yeah. And uh, Jay Staff's doing a tremendous job in his absence. Yeah. Shout out to his, his other coaches. Uh, he's got a 6'3 junior named Taj Collins and a 6'3 uh, sophomore named Evan Meberg, <coughs> who are two of their leaders uh, on their team. And when you play Jay, you got to be ready for anything. Uh, I, I played him so many times as when I was coaching. Uh, he will have them ready. He will have them playing hard. Uh, JR says that uh, there's assistants have stepped up and they doesn't seem like they're missing a beat. You know, uh, hopefully uh, Jay, <coughs> Coach Mahoney can be there. I know that he's got some pressure from home to to get well because his daughter gets married in a week. Uh -huh. So uh, that'll that'll push him. You know, that'll yeah. push him. Evan Meberg uh, is the son of uh, one of the Meebergs. Uh, they were a set of twins, actually, that played back in the day for Cresco and Marty <coughs> Rivard. So it's come full circle a little bit for that family, which is real nice. Right. That's all. You know, that's always like Mike Sabool <coughs> and some of the other guys. He's uh, Brian Gassion, You know, guys who st starred in in their in their own right in the tournament, if not uh, at their schools, are back coaching in the county. I, I think that's uh, that's great. And and that brings us to number 15 and another one of those guys. Uh, the Mawa T-Birds coached by Mike Brannick who played for me. Got a little plug there. Played for me at Waldwick. Mike's been doing a great job there for several years now. Uh, they were an at-large bid. One of the few at-large bids. They will play Creskill tomorrow uh, at Indian Hills at 1 o'clock. Um, Mawa came in at 8 and 5. Um, and they are playing a very tough division. And um, this was one of those, when, you, when you're an at-large team, this was one of those uh, schools that we spent a lot of time on uh, Wednesday night talking about uh, Mawa, about strength of schedule and all those other criteria. Uh, they play very hard, they very fast, uh, drive the ball to the basket. If you blink, you miss it. Uh, if you cut them off, they shoot the three or shoot the jump shot. They <coughs> play at a high rate of speed. They play, uh, uh, they, they are guard oriented. Uh, they will pressure the ball, um, and you know we saw them. I saw them play against Dumont, which was a great game. Uh, they lost by a couple. Uh, they beat Pagoda. They beat Saddle River Day. They beat a uh, DePaul team that's uh, that's pretty good team in the, in the uh, parochial division, and they lost <laughs> to Dumont, Pascat Kills, Ramsey, and Ridgefield Park, all of whom are in the tournament. So uh, Mawa again will play Creskill at uh, one o'clock tomorrow at Indian Hills. The Mawa Thunderbirds. Okay, the Dumont Huskies. Now we've uh, we mentioned the Dumont Huskies are going to play Garfield at Bergen tomorrow <laughs> at two two thirty. Um, Kenny Mortarell is is uh, uh, coaching the Dumont Huskies. They're nine and three. Um, they are in the um, Big North now. We get in some of the bigger schools, uh, the Big North team, and they have okay. Dominic Barlow, who is at six seven, is one of a uh, six seven junior, who is one of the more uh, uh, dominant players in the county. Barlow is, uh, not only is he big, but he can, he can handle, he can go, he can shoot, you know, he can take over a game. Uh, you know, uh, when they played Mawa, he, you know, he did, uh, he did take over the game a little bit and helped them win because Mawa was, again, tough, uh, tough to win, uh, tough to play. Um, and uh, if, uh, uh, you know, you're playing them, you know, Garfield tomorrow, as we said, Garfield's got some athletic <coughs> things. It's going to be a nice matchup. You know, these, these big guys w who can play, they can move. They're not just big, strong guys. They can get up and down run, and get after shoot. it. Yeah. Yeah. We, did, uh, we did Dumont game, and we've seen a couple of Dumont games, and yeah. they're very athletic, and that, that center Excellent. is very good. He's yeah. Excellent. Well, they He's also have a kid by the name of Jorge Jaquez, yeah. who 
you see him play and you you that kid I want on my team. Yeah. He just he's all over the place, plays his heart out. Loose balls he'll come from thirty feet to get. Coach's dream. He is. Yeah, Barlow got injured the game we were doing and he took the game over when Barlow went out. So you're right. He impressed us the little the game that we did. Yep. And you're just amplifying what we saw. Yep. Yeah. Good. He, he does everything that maybe play. doesn't show up in the box score. Yeah. But he can you take need over it, the game. You need it done to win. Yep. Yeah. He's a kid you want. They have two or three other kids on that team that can run and shoot. I love the the job that the head coach does with that team. It does. He gets 150 percent on the kids. You know, and and just a, uh, a little bit of an aside. Um, Last year we started, we introduced uh, a new award, the, uh, the Doug Yenny Award. Um, uh, actually it was the Doug Yenny's dad, it was the Charlie Yenny <coughs> Award. Award. And the Charlie Yenny Award is for guys like John described, uh, a player who goes all out to lead his team, may not have the, you know, all the major big time stats, but you can tell his uh, excellent sportsmanship, leadership, um, you know, supports the team even when they're on the bench. Uh, and and uh, we named it after Charlie Yenny, who was one of the founders of the tournament. The reason why I mentioned Doug Yenny, his son, because Doug is our Bollerman Award winner, as were you guys not oh. too many years ago. Thank you very you much. Know? Here again. I, I <laughs> still uh, look at it and make sure it stays clean. <laughs> that. <day. laughs> uh, and uh, just to wrap up on the Huskies, uh, they have uh, wins over Mawa and uh, DePaul, and their losses were to th their three losses were to three tournament teams. Uh, uh, Pascal Hills, Ridgeville Park, and Ramsey. So that's number 14, the Dumont Huskies. Uh, number 13, <laughs> Saddle River Day Rebels. Uh, Anthony Gallo has taken over Saddle River Day Rebels a couple years ago, and um, he's got them moving in the right direction. Uh, led by uh, Dylan Besserer again, he's senior, 5'10", and uh, Connor um, Saran, 6'4", uh, senior. Uh, they are 12-2. and two. Uh, overall, they are undefeated in the NJIC Patriot Division. Uh, they are playing uh, Dwight Englewood School on I H at uh, Indian Hills at 2:30 on uh, tomorrow. <laughs> so that should be a real good game, Saddle River Day against Dwight Englewood. Uh, Saddle River Day's got wins over Midland Park, Crestgill twice, um, Immaculata, and Bogota, and their uh, two losses were to Wayne Valley and to Mawa. So you have. Uh, uh a nice, uh, you know, kind of like prep school <laughs> matchup tomorrow with Saddle River Day against uh, Dwight Englewood. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> should be a good game. Mm. Yep, should be. Both teams have uh, quality players, and both coaches do a great job. <laughs> uh, number 12, we are uh, uh, back to the Big North. We have the uh, Dwight Morrow Maroon Raiders, uh, Englewood. Uh, <laughs> they are 10-4. and four. They are undefeated, and they are in first place in the Big North uh, Patriot Division. Uh, uh, they will play tomorrow against Leonia at this school over here at 1245. Uh, and uh, Englewood, led by Leo Jones the last few years, are Englewood. Englewood is, you know, when you mention Bergen County basketball, you think of some certain schools, and one of them is Englewood, going back to the early days of basketball in the county. Uh, they are led by uh, Andres uh, Andres. Uh, Fulgencio, uh, who is a 20-plus <coughs> scorer, 20-plus a game scorer. They are always a tough out. They are always full court, man-to-man uh, man -man or, or uh, zone traps. <laughs> they are all over. They are extremely quick. It's very difficult. I can tell you, uh, you know, from, from experience that they are very difficult to prepare for because you can't match their quickness yeah, they in your gym. They create problems. They do. They really do. Uh, their quality wins are Eastside, uh, uh, Riverdale, uh, and they also beat Teaneck. Teaneck down a little bit, but still Teaneck is <laughs> Teaneck. And their losses are to uh, St. Joe's, Kennedy, St. Peter's, and uh, Ramsey. So if you think about, you know, we talk about criteria for getting into the tournament. You have, uh, you know, do the teams, when they play in out of their league, are they playing up? Okay, so Eastside, uh, uh, I'm sorry, St. Joe's, Kennedy, St. Peter's, and <laughs> Uh, you know, are not in their league. So they're going out and playing <coughs> playing good teams. So those are the Maroon Raiders of Dwight Morrow <laughs> and the 12 spot. As we mentioned, they are playing uh, Leonia at uh, Westwood tomorrow in, this in the 12-45 game. <coughs> okay, that brings us down to um, another big North team, the Ridgefield Park Scarlets, who are having a great year under uh, uh, our, 
our, our compadre, Chris Gaskin. Chris Gaskin is uh, uh, an alum of our uh, college, yeah. St. Francis and uh, <coughs> St. Francis University in Loretto. JR and I went there. We did not go at the same time. Uh, school was a lot of, uh, no, I was there a lot. the same fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was there quite a bit before JR and certainly quite a bit before Chris Gaskin. But uh, we'd like to give a shout out to our St. Francis uh, buddies. The Red Flash. Uh, the Red Flash, yes. So the Ridgefield Scarlets, by the way, they won last night, the Red Flash. They beat yes. Central Connecticut. Biggest uh, comeback in Northeast Conference <coughs> history. There you go. See? You get a little college stuff right. here, too. Yeah. You get all kinds yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Oh. Down 21 in the second half, they came back to win. There you go. <coughs> so we're, uh, you know, we're not only watching the high school games, <laughs> we're watching college. What do we do? What do we do? We watch <laughs> basketball, you know? Okay, so the Scarlets are led by uh, uh, Isaiah M Mendez, number 12, and um, uh, Jen C. Reyes, uh, 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 not number 12, 12th grade, and Jen C. Reyes is a real quick guard, number 11. Uh, they, they, are, they're, they start a younger team, you know, not as many seniors, and, um, you know, Chris has done a great job rebuilding, getting them back to the top. Uh, they're third in the American division behind Ramsey and Pascat Hill. Obviously, two really good programs. Uh, they beat Mawa uh, the, and Dumont, who are in the tournament. They lost to uh, Pascat Kills and Ramsey and DePaul. So their three losses are against pretty good teams. So Chris Gaskin in the Scarlets tomorrow will play at Bergen Catholic at 1245 against Becton. Richfield Park. That seems, I should I see Richfield. They're like a rugged team. They're very physical. Did they I catch get, that they right? They get after you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And they're well balanced. It does a really good job with them. They're not real big, but they're all tough. And like I said, they do. They get after you. They grind you. Yeah. They grind you the entire game. Coach they're Gaskin they're gets the most out of his team. Uh, uh. He does. Does a good job. Does a great job. Yeah. Okay, so that brings us to the number 10 Fairlawn Cutters, who will play Midland Park tomorrow in the first game at this school over here. Uh, okay. Coached by Kyle Sabella, as, as um, uh, uh, he's done in the last few years, he has really gotten his kids uh, back on the map. You know, Fairlawn um, had not been uh, a tournament team for a while. Um, they have uh, a lot of seniors. They have a lot of seniors. And there are three uh, big-time players, uh, Darius Sokic, uh, Or uh, Sundayevsky, and John uh, Barrett. Um, these three guys, 6'3", six, 6'5", six, 6'4", six, respectively, have not necessarily <coughs> been on the court at the same time. They have had uh, a couple of injuries, some, some nicks and stuff, and, and, and They're one just of them getting was sick. Healthy now. One of them was sick. Good time to get healthy. You know, yeah. so um, the Cutters play in the Independence Division of the Big North, which is the division where they're the only Bergen team in that division. Um, you know, so... Um, uh, they are in first place. They're six and zero in that division, and they haven't had their three guys, their, uh, you know, their whole team, real healthy, all at the same time. So in figuring put, out, good. Put your money on on Fairlawn to win a couple of games. Well, I think <laughs> if they get everybody healthy, and I, that they're was going to be that. dangerous. They could be dangerous. Yeah. I think that's what <laughs> we're hearing. Though they're going to be, uh, they're getting healthy, right? Yes. Uh, they, they could. Were very good last year. Don't yeah, think. yeah, and they're back again. So they've got uh, experience in the tournament. And um, you know this could be this could be a tough this is a tough tenth seed, this is a tough tenth seed. Uh, uh, they've got wins over um, Boys Latin, uh, Phoenixville, both from Pennsylvania, Wayne Valley, Wayne Hills, Sea Caucus. So they've beaten some good teams. Their losses, their three losses are to um, Bergen Catholic, uh, Ramsey, and I forget who else they lost to. Oh, Eastside, Eastside. Eastside. East side they lost three quality it. losses. So they got three quality losses. Uh, and again, if, if you know, if they're healthy, you know, this could be this could be a sleeper team. This could be somebody, somebody who could make a run keep in an the eye on that yeah. team. Well this kid yeah. Darius Sahikish uh, was out with a, a bummed up knee. Mm -hmm. He did surgery in the preseason. <laughs> he did. And he's back now and he's a kind of a throwback kid. He's a pass first kid, which is <coughs> very unusual the way the game is played today. So he's fun to watch. And uh, with the other two kids, they're pretty good. And, and they have a nice little core of kids with them. So they yeah. go yeah. six or seven deep. They could make some noise in the tournament. Really enjoy watching them play, too. It's going to be interesting to see against Midland Park because Midland Park has a good big guy. Um, 
uh, tomorrow. So uh, a good match it, it, it could be a good inside matchup. See how they how that plays out. That's at at the school over here at eleven o'clock. Um, and um, yeah, you guys should go see that game. <laughs> Yeah, Taylor Bergen. I you need a pass? I'll get you a pass. Uh, <laughs> don't well, we thanks a lot. Don't we have something we can go there any time? Well, I, this shirt does a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the sweater gets us a lot. Don't they have a guy there, binoculars, looking to see if we're coming in or not? <laughs> <laughs> Cleared away. Here, here, here comes John and Larry. <laughs> Get the first parking space, right? You park right up against it. Yeah, we walk. Oh, we you, walk. you walk. Okay. Three quarters of a mile. Okay, <laughs> uh, number nine. That brings <laughs> up to number nine, the Pascack Hills Cowboys, uh, another team that is traditionally uh, a quality program led by uh, uh, Paul DeRico. Um, they're 10 and 2. They're 6 and 1 in the big North American division. Um, that's, second, that's good <laughs> for second place. Um, they are always tough. They, they run fabulous stuff. Uh, on their bench is. Uh, uh, Mike O'Brien, <coughs> who has uh. been around for a long time, Mike, um, and M Mike knows how to play. He knows he knows how the game should be played. He <coughs> knows Bergen County basketball inside and out. And um, you know, uh, Paul, with Mike on the bench <coughs> and the rest of his assistants, have done a real quality job. They're always tough. Um, this, by the way, the ninth seed becomes an important seed uh, <coughs> because this is the last seed that doesn't get a bye. So this is the highest seeded team that would be playing tomorrow um, in the tournament. Um, they are playing, <coughs> Pascat Kills is playing St. Mary at uh, West, West, Westwood High School <laughs> at uh, 2.30. 30. Um, <laughs> they've got, uh, Pascat Kills got wins over uh, Creskill, <coughs> Ridgefield Park, Mawa, Dumont, all tournament teams. Their two losses are to Ramsey and to uh, Paramus Catholic. So those are uh, two uh, tough losses. They're uh, Jason Schulman, Jake Morales, Christian Kim, 6'2", 6'3", 6'3", respectively, senior, junior, senior, respectively, um, give them some inside presence. And they are always very fundamentally sound, don't make a lot of mm. mistakes. You know, they always will get a good shot. They, you know, they don't take bad shots. And um, we expect Pascal Kills always to be a tough out. Okay. They share the basketball. They share the basketball. It's nice. <coughs> nice to watch. Okay, that gets us down to the final eight, and these last eight teams will not play tomorrow. So these are the teams that uh, have a, uh, uh, a bye in tomorrow's round. So um, the Ramapo Raiders at number eight, who were, I believe, number four last year. They were top four yeah. last year, I think. Correct. Uh, they're 10 and four. They're five and one, tied for first place in the Big North Freedom Division led by Coach Joe Sandberg, of course, of uh, Bergen Catholic <coughs> and uh, Penn. He went to went to U Penn. He yes. went to U Penn and, and played, I think he played football down here, right? He did. And uh, very good. Joe does a great job. Uh, you know, he's a, a, a big time motivator. Uh, last year, they were high seed and they did, you know, they played to that seed. They did real good. Chris Valvano, uh, 12th grader and uh, Max Pernetti. Uh, some folks in uh, sports in New Jersey may know that name, Pernetti. His dad uh, uh, played in the early 90s at Ramapo, was on a great Ramapo team with Glenn Stokes and those guys who uh, lost in the final to Pagoda. I think in 91 might have been the Ramapo. Uh, uh, yeah. I guess they, they I think it might have been. Did they have that big kid was that, uh, from Ramapo who was 6'11"? Back, then? Back yeah. then? Well, uh, Glenn, Glenn Stokes, Stokes was 6'9". Stokes, six nine. Stokes. Six nine, yeah. yeah, yeah. Glenn, Glenn uh, Glenn's a big time player. Yeah, how big he was. <laughs> yeah, that was a great game. Remember that? That was uh, Bogota with uh, Sullivan and those guys. We had that game. We had that. that yeah, I, I know you guys talk about that, that game. Nushwant, I never forget the kid. Kenny Nushwant yeah. scored yeah. 47 points, and Danny Sabella was on the team. And Danny yeah. Sabella. Yeah. <laughs> and they played yeah. against. Um, that was a couple years later. That was in mid 90s. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, Raymond Paul back again. Bergen. Back again in the top eight. Look for them to be, you know, moving on. N no reason why not. Um, they were in the semis last year. Um, they've uh, their wins. They beat Eastside. They beat Hackensack. Uh, they lost to Ridgewood, Bergen Catholic, and Ramsey. Um, I saw their game against uh, uh, Ridgewood. Was a tough, tough game, and they couldn't buy a basket down the stretch. I, they lo they missed a, a bunch of shots down the stretch, but every one of them was right there. And one of them goes in. Th they could have easily had uh, uh, beaten Ridgewood, and Ridgewood, of course, is a real quality program. Uh, so the Raiders of Ramapo 
will play the winner of the Pascac Hills St. Mary's game. And those games will be, uh, the second round games will be at Northern <coughs> Highlands and Tenafly. We are not sure yet where, uh, where the Ramapo Raiders will play, which one of those sites. But you can count on Ramapo <coughs> to be one of the toughest teams in the tournament. Um, <coughs> and um, I mentioned earlier, um, in this uh, freedom division uh, of which Ramapo uh, is, uh, we also have the next team, number seven, the uh, Ridgewood Maroons, and we also have number six, the Hackensack Comets. That's a tough, mm. that's a tough three teams. And uh, when we looked at these teams at for the sixth, seventh, and eighth spots <laughs> in the seeds, uh, they had all beat each other. So uh, you know, Ramapo might be able to say, you know, well, we beat, you know, we beat Hackensack, but then, you know, then. And uh, Hackensack can say that they beat Ridgewood, and then Ridgewood could say <laughs> that they beat uh, Ramapo. So uh, that's a tough division, and uh, uh, those three teams, <laughs> Ramapo, Ridgewood, and Hackensack, uh, are all tied for first place. So that gets us to another criteria yeah. point, <coughs> which is kind of moot because they're all in tied for first place in their division. Uh, but the Ridgewood Maroons are ten and four, as I mentioned, five and one, uh, led by Mike Troy, who's been there for several years, doing a great job. Uh, they have some, some big, strong kids. Uh, Devin Johnson is their point guard. He's 5'10", but uh, uh, Matt Favieri is 6'2", leads a crew of 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", guys. They got four or five of them that uh, they can all play. They rebound. They're strong. They can score. You got to cover them. And he can just rotate those guys in, and they can come in and bang, bang around for a while, get some rebounds, get some, some stick backs, and, and uh, you know, make it real hard for you. Uh, uh, they have beaten Ramsey, Eastside, and uh, 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 Ramapo, uh, as I mentioned. They lost to uh, St. Peter's, uh, St. Peter's Prep, Union, and Hunt <laughs> School, who we're not really sure about. But uh, we had to research them, and, and that was a little strange research. We, you know, they have 50 or they have 50 or players. I'm not sure exactly how that worked. But <laughs> anyway, um, the Ridgewood Maroons, uh, <laughs> you know, Group Four. Bergen County, tough program. Always you always got always got to count the Ridgewood Maroons yeah. as a possibility, possible team to win the tournament. Ridgewood is Mike always Troy. there every year. There you every are. year. Mike Troy. So again, you know, now number six is uh, Hackensack Comets. Uh, they're ten and five, five and one in that same division, tied with Ramapo and Ridgewood. Um, Aaron Taylor still on the uh, helm there over at Hackensack, doing a great job leading them in uh, not only in great basketball, but he's also a real class guy. He does a great job. Uh, uh, Seth Sharif Brown, 6'4", senior, is a 20-plus big mobile type player. Gets up and down the court, very athletic. You know, it, 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 you know, you can see how the game has changed. These bigs now, they're not just big guys <laughs> that clog up the middle. They, they go out and play on the perimeter. They move, they run, uh, you know, uh, making it really difficult to match up. Uh, the Comets have beaten Ramsey, Eastside, Ridgewood. Their losses are to, uh, uh, some of their losses would be to St. Peter's Prep, Ramapo, Union, and Bergen Catholic. So obviously they're playing a real, real tough schedule. Uh, so uh, at the sixth spot, they will play the winner of Becton and Ridgefield Park. By the way, Ridgewood, who I just forgot to say this, uh, Ridgewood at the seventh spot will play the winner of Midland Park and Fairlawn. Uh, so uh, that's, that would be next week. Okay, down to the final five. Um, Premise Catholic Paladins uh, back in the tournament and making some noise. Uh, they're making some noise. Uh, Mike Dodo uh, left Crestville a couple of three years ago and went over to Paramus Catholic, and it didn't take long for Mike to get right back, uh, to get Paramus Catholic right back up there in the uh, top echelon of the county. Uh, he has Jordan uh, Morris, who's a... Uh, 5'11", 12th grader who, who uh, can fill it up from the outside. And they also have uh, Derek Bueno, who's a 6'6", junior transfer, uh, who's going to give them uh, a presence inside. Uh, Mike, coming from that Creskill, uh, Marty Rivard tree, uh, is going to have them playing hard-nosed fundamentals. But with this team, he has uh, speed and quickness uh, and athleticism. So they're going to fly around a little bit, too. Uh, you know, his, his, uh, his wins are, uh, you know, you look at the wins he's got. He beat Ridgefield Park, Ramapo, Don Bosco, Pascac Hills, and St. Joe's, who are all in the tournament. 
And they're going to be our guests <coughs> at uh, this segment. They're waiting outside. We're going to talk oh, to Mike and great. some of their players. And they had a big win last night. An yeah, exciting win on a buzzer, buzzer beater. Yep. yep. So and they're playing very uh, well. Their Derek Bueno just scored his 1,000th point as a junior. So he's uh, off and running. Mm, they're waiting outside. They're probably watching TV out there <laughs> watching <laughs> the show. Well, uh, you know, and, and again, Mike Dotto has always done a great job. He did a fabulous job at Cresco, getting them into the tournament every year. And now he brings that over to uh, to a bigger program, a bigger school uh, at uh, Paramus Catholic. They lost to, uh, and again, listen to these losses. They lost uh, their five losses: Kennedy, Bergen Catholic, St. Joe's, and uh, you know, da, uh, DePaul and Eastside. You know, so the term quality <laughs> losses. Quality losses. They they you know they're a team to be reckoned with. Paul, they play the winner of Leonia <coughs> and Floyd Morrow. So, uh, and, and again, we don't know where that game would be. Uh, it's either going to be at Northern Highlands or at Tenafly, but that game will be a week from tomorrow, those right. games, so on, the, on the February 8th. Uh, okay, down to four. Uh, uh, this was a real interesting discussion for us, the Ramsey Rams. Uh, they are 11-5, and 7-0. Um, uh, They're in the Big North American Division. They have one of the top players in the county, Sean Hansen, who is committed 6-9, uh, who is uh, committed to go to Cornell. Uh, they have uh, Jaden Quinterly, who's a real good guard, 12th grade, and then they have uh, Stephen Turk, who's another 6'5 guy. Uh, Ramsey, uh, I saw, we saw them early at uh, St. Joe's. We did. And, uh, you know, St. Joe's was winning the whole game, and, and uh, Ramsey had, was, this was early in the season, and they were off to a, a little bit of a tough start. I think they had lost three of their first four or something like that. And um, we knew they were going to be good, so there was, you know, oh, let's, Let's go see them. Let's see what's going on over there. And although they lost the game at St. Joe's, they battled back. I mean, they were down. We thought it was time for them to pack it in, and they did not pack it in. They they kept fighting it, fighting it, fight. The next thing you know, it's a four-point game, you know. Yeah. And they got the they had the ball, you know, down by four with some time left. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, R Ramsey's got and the wins that they have. I mean, you look at at quality wins, okay. So Ramsey beat Ramapo, Dwight Morrow, Dumont, Pascat Hills, Fairlawn, Ridgeville Park, Mawa. All those tournament teams Ramsey beat. Now again, they, they got off to a rough start early on. They were one and three in their first four. But and they played a they played a, a very tough schedule oh, in the beginning just of the season. I saw them against <coughs> Rutgers Prep, yeah. who's a very talented team. They got down early and they fought back, didn't give up. They, up at uh, Ramapo College in the right. Dennis Gregory Classic. Right. So, um, and their losses, their five losses, St. Joe's by a few, like I said, Hackensack, John just mentioned, uh, reference yeah. Rutgers Prep, they lost to uh, Riverdale, and they also lost to Pascac Hills. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is a, you know, a, a, a four seed uh, that, uh, you know, may not look like, you know, a dominant team, but when, you want, when, the, when they throw the ball up in the air, they play, and they are led by Kevin McGuire, who is That's doing one of the reasons absolute I guess fabulous it job. It's so Kevin important McGuire. for you to watch the team yeah. a couple of times. And different people on the committee watch them also? Like, yes. you'll watch oh, yeah. them I and then look will go I watch I saw them. Ramsey in person twice. Right. One of the games I was at, Leon Steinberg was there with me. So you got a different pair of eyes watching yes. you and getting a different perspective. <laughs> so I, I, can I can see where a lot of discussion went into Ramsey. I, I think well, we, we did. the committee probably saw, I think, seven different Ramsey games. Okay. Yeah. They always I saw them a few times. Yeah. They shoot the three, and now you got the six nine guy in, inside. You got to be careful. But he, he can also step yeah, out and I shoot the that, three though. too. I know so that, you, you want you know you, he go inside. He, he, you're right, yeah. Yeah. John. He can go inside and score inside, sure. but he can also shoot and he can handle the ball too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the kid, a hell the kid of a player. Steve Turk uh, is another kid that doesn't throw a lot of stats at you, but he does a lot of their grunt work. He goes in, he rebounds. He probably is their best defender. Yeah. He's a tough kid, um, you know. Coaches he, would love to have him. Yeah, he's guys yeah. that coaches watch, but the you know the every everyday fan is going to watch Hans and, and their point guard Quinnelly. Yeah. Turk's a nice kid to watch. He gets all the dirty work done. And Ramsey will play the winner of the thirteen twenty game, Saddle River Day, and Dwight Englewood. Uh, number three, Don Bosco Prep, uh, the Iron Men, of course. Uh, <coughs> two years ago. Uh, uh, Kevin DeVario's team maybe had the best, you could argue, had w maybe the best season in the history of Bergen County basketball. They lost, uh, uh, they lost to Bergen once, and then they lost the second game was in the TOC finals. I, I think. think. Yeah. Uh, he's got two guys that you may see on TV, uh, 
pretty regular. You got uh, uh, Harper Jr. down at uh, mm -hmm. at Rutgers, and you got uh, uh, Erlington over at uh, St. John's. Both both are either starting or getting quality minutes. Oh, Harper starts. He's yeah, and Erlington's getting some more minutes at St. John's. Uh, so two years ago they had that that wonderful run. Um, Kevin Kevin just does a great job, uh, you know, and and uh, they also have Harassi on that team. He's up at Marist. Yeah, that's true too. That's right. I liked his game. He was a good yep. player. Uh, so um, they were in the finals last year, and, and again in 2018 they had that unbelievable uh, that unbelievable run. Uh, Isaiah Williams, 6'3", 12th grader. Miles Ruth, six foot, 12th grader, among others, uh, you know, who can light it up. Uh, uh, at nine and six, they uh, you know they lost to Bergen, St. Joe's in overtime, Marist uh, in a double overtime, so they could easily have flipped that nine and six to uh, to a better record. And this was, as I mentioned, this was kind of an interesting because uh, coming into the uh, the selection night uh, or the night before the Tuesday night, uh, with the possibility out there of 24 uh, uh, automatic, uh, quali automatic <laughs> qualifiers, Bosco was not going to get to that 650 automatic qualifying. Numbers. So some people may say, well, look, you know, that they're almost, uh, you know, on the outside looking in maybe. How did they get to the three seed? Well, you just look at their schedule. You know, they beat uh, Immaculate Conception. They beat Modern Day. I mean, they're, they're obviously a top, one of the top ten teams, if uh, I'm pretty sure, close to the top ten in New Jersey, right? You know, top 20 anyway. And I will also say that they played a bunch of out-of-state games that John researched for us, and I'll let him kind of fill you in on some of those <coughs> teams. They lost a close game down in, in a tournament to a, a Florida team that's ranked in uh, the top 10 in the state of Florida. They lost, I think, 67, 61. They played them tough. So um, Don Bosco will get the winner of Garfield Dumont next Saturday. And uh, they may uh, may pull off a wonderful guard off the bench by the name of Bobby Steinberg. Bobby Steinberg. Steinberg. <laughs> oh, Bobby, Bobby Steinberg. Bobby. Do you have a, a lion cub? You, you have a little lion cub out cup? there. <laughs> <laughs> here he is over here. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Steinberg. Yes, Leon's son. Yeah. Leon is so excited yeah, to get to. Yeah, Leon is so excited. Bobby was here. Yeah, Bo Bobby. You know, when Bobby was younger, he was he knew as much about uh, about. Yeah. Bergen County and basketball and as we just, do. You know, for the selection <coughs> process, just so people know that, you know, some transparency, when we oh discussed yeah. Don Bosco, uh, we asked Leon to excuse himself and leave the meeting since his son is on the team. So we didn't take any input from Leon on the discussion ab about Don Bosco prep and their seating. Excellent, John. Excellent point. We don't, uh, and we would do that for anybody who's in the room. You've uh, done that in the past. That's always, well, always. We've done that in the past. I don't know exactly, but and I remember a couple times. the same times. thing with the two coaches that yeah, are liaisons. Has, when we discuss their Kites team, we asked the coach the that room. respective team to yep. leave the meeting temporarily while yep. we discuss yep. their team. That's always been a. Uh, yeah, I know uh, you've done it before. Our, <laughs> one of our rules. Now we're down to the last two. Okay, so now we're down to the last two. And, and um, uh, number two, St. Joe's Green Knights. Of course, Mike Darty. You know, uh, one of the top coaches in the county. I think Michael just won his 500th he game, did, if did. I am not mistaken. Uh, and he, uh, an alum, again, one yeah. of those guys, like he we start. mentioned earlier. An alum coming yeah. back to coach his alma mater. Uh, he won the, the Jamboree when he was a senior. When he was a senior? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and, and now Shout he's... Shout out, he was a star player at Muhlenberg College. Muhlenberg, yeah. yeah. The Mules. Yes. And uh, so Michael's back uh, uh, coaching his team to 500 wins, a, more, a little more, a couple more than that by now probably. And um, they are 13-1, and one, not a bad record. Uh, and they are uh, tied with uh, Bergen Catholic for first place in the Big North, Big North United, which of course is the powerhouse <laughs> parochial division. Um, the Green Knights feature uh, Nazir Williams, 6'1", senior, uh, Daniel Lands, 6-foot, uh, junior, and uh, Dyree Rogers, a 6'1", uh, 12th grader. When I saw them, I was impressed with the every one of their kids is extremely athletic. They're strong. They get after you. They're quick. They anticipate well. They're all over you on defense. It's very difficult for you to run any type of stuff that you like to run against them because they really can force you, uh, can force you out uh, of what you want to do. Um, uh, they were in the semis last year. They were the 2016 uh, champs. Um, they've got wins over uh, uh, Don Bosco in overtime, Gil St. Bernard, uh, Paramus Catholic, Pleasantville, and Ramsey. Not too bad. Uh, their one loss coming into the selection night um, 
was uh, Bergen Catholic. But uh, what happened last night? They lost. They, lo they, uh, yeah, they lost to PC. They which lost is a to uh, pr uh, pa uh, Primus Catholic. Uh, we were there for you that know. game. Were you there last night? We were, th we were there for the Bergen Catholic. Set. I never oh. saw two teams with the guards, both teams' guards, up against you yeah. so fast. They were unbelievable. Probably, yes. Well, PC's Bergen guards are being they in your face as well. Yeah. It was <coughs> unbelievable. The, the guard play there might have been the best I've seen. I mean, it's tremendous. One of the best. I can't say. I'm, somebody's going to remind me something I saw, Coach but Doherty's I don't remember anything better than that. Coach Doherty's teams always play tough, tough defenses. Paul tough Manson. game, back and yeah. forth. Oh. Not, you you, you don't score any easy Catholic points game. against this no. team. So no. What about last night? They lost to. Well, we're getting to. We'll get to that. Yeah. Well, so so you you know, St. Joe's is, is is obviously at the second seed. Is is one of the favorites. Uh, Along with you know any uh, any of the teams you know who knows, mm -hmm. uh, but St. Joe's will play the winner of uh, Mawa Creskill. Once again, the St. John uh, uh, St. John's St. Joe's Green Knights, and that brings us down to number one. And number one is uh, the Bergen Catholic Crusaders, and um, they are 13 and two. Uh, well, going into the selection, <coughs> they were 13 and two, um, and uh, four and zero. Oh. They uh, were in. Uh, uh, first place in the uh, Big North United. Uh, Bergen Catholic, of course, features Matt Zona, who is uh, a little bit under weather lately. So, uh, uh, you know, he, they, they don't play in the tournament until next week. They will play the winner of Bogota and Hasbro Heights. Uh, Billy Armstrong uh, has done a wonderful job there for some years now, uh, uh, getting Bergen, uh, in, you know, to where they are. Uh, Rajon Figures is a great player, six foot three senior. Will Richardson, 6'1", uh, sophomore, and of course, as I mentioned, 6'9", uh, Matt Zona. And then they also got 6'7", they got 6'8". I mean, they got a bunch <laughs> of guys that could play. Um, they are, uh, last year they won the tournament. Uh, since last year, we had the uh, uh, tragedy of losing uh, their athletic director, Jack McGovern, who was a great friend of the tournament and a, uh, uh, a great human being. Uh, it was very difficult for us, those of us here and, and others who know uh, Jack. His son, uh, Brendan, is uh, taking over his duties over at uh, Bergen Catholic. Um, the Crusaders have wins over uh, uh, Primus Catholic, Hackensack, St. John's, St. John's, St. Jo uh, Joe's, Don Bosco, and Ramapo. And they lost to uh, a Long Island Lutheran and St. Andrews from Maryland. Yeah, Long Island Lutheran's really yeah. good. Yeah, they're one of the top teams in the country. Well, I just want to uh, bring it to chat about Jack McGovern. He was, he was great to us here at WCTV. And the last time we saw him was at the finals last yeah. year at yes. the Jamboree. Yes. He came and we talked mm -hmm. and uh, it was a very nice talk. I'll never forget it. He was uh, very upbeat about the team mm -hmm. and where he was going. Jack was just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Um, <coughs> if we look at that, we, we have some of the slides that I will put up real quickly. Uh, slide number uh, six, we have the round of 16, Sorry. which will be, here we go. It's up at the, um, you see it here, this is how it's gonna break. Um, the, the teams that Paul and Rook and uh, John have been, uh, mentioned, that's how they play. They'll be playing them uh, tomorrow in the three sites and then they move on and to play next week. Uh, the times and where their play will be announced will be in the papers. We'll have it up on our website. so. Uh, you'll be able to see that, okay? Uh, <coughs> tomorrow, here's the games tomorrow. Now, it was mentioned we wanna make sure you see it, you know when it's coming on, so go ahead, go watch it. There's no Super Bowl tomorrow. At Westwood, our uh -huh. old stomping grounds, it starts at 11 o'clock, Midland Park, Fairlawn, then you got Leonia, Dwight Morrow, St. Mary's, Pascal Kills, at Bergen Catholic, Hasbro Heights, Pagoda, that starts at 11 o'clock. Beckton, Richfield Park at 1245, Garfield, Dumont at 2.30, and then up at Indian Hills at 1 o'clock, you have Mawa versus Cresco, and 2.30, Dwight Englewood versus okay, Saddle right. River <coughs> Day. So that's what the schedule looks like. Next week, games will be played at 11, 12.45, 2.30, and 4.15 at Northern Highlands in Allendale and at Tenafly High School. So those are, that'll be uh, uh, next week. It'll be a week from tomorrow. And yeah. then uh, we get into the, uh, the quarterfinals. That'll be at FDU at the Rotman <coughs> Center. And then the semifinal Saturday the 22nd will be, as Paul mentioned, at Hackensack <coughs> High School. And the Jamboree will come to an end. The championship <coughs> game will be at FDU on Friday the 28th 
of February. So all of February is condensed. It's basketball, basketball, <coughs> and, and more, more basketball. basketball. So uh, you guys went into everything. Um, we uh, this was this was extremely in depth, John. No, it's unbelievable. Look the at Bergen. The, you want to read that? <coughs> sure. The Bergen County Coaches Association and Bergen Jamboree Committee thanks the staff, athletic departments of Bergen Catholic, Hackensack High School, Indian Hills High School, Northern Highland, Tenant Fly High School, Westwood High School, and Fairleigh Dickinson University for hosting the 2020 Jamboree game. They want to check because I'm an umpire. Do I have good eyes? You can see I can read. <laughs> well, I, I, but uh, just to back that up, I'm, I'm just to back that up, those folks are great. I mean, each of those venues, they, you know, and if you look at some of the venues like uh, 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 Northern Highlands, uh, Tenafly, Westwood, Indian Hills, they don't have teams in the tournament, but they still do a fabulous job. Uh, and I think that's that, that goes for you know your, your other sports you talk about. The, the you know the schools know that uh, uh, they have to conduct these county uh, tournaments uh, for all their sports, and uh, you know they offer their facility and they go ahead and, and work their butt off. Uh, uh, you know, to get ready. Uh, like I mentioned uh, Lorenzo Barada at Indian Hills, and of course Brendan McGovern tomorrow at Bergen, and uh, Danny Vivino over here. He's, you know, the, for our first time going back over there to, uh, uh, you know, to go to back to uh, go over to Westwood. These guys do a great job, you know, and they make, you know, the first couple of rounds. Um, those high schools that host the first couple of rounds, they really do almost everything for us. They do almost everything for us when it comes to site management setting up all the workers and everything and security and uh, we just kind of we just kind of show up <laughs> uh, the next two weekends and then uh, then we go on to the college and the college uh, FDU uh, uh, has always been great to us uh, Dave Miles over there and Kathy Liggett uh, they do a great job just just ridiculous and now Ke uh, Keith Veltry has stepped up at Hackensack to do a great job for us too. We did we, they do very well with us at the FDU they, they make us pack our equipment. We don't have to carry it. We put our equipment away, and we come back the next, uh, next week. We have to bring it back here. There's no packing, unpacking. I want to thank the three of you for coming. Thank you guys for having and us. I, you, you gave everyone, it's imp I, think, I think, and John agrees, we agree. We talk about this all the time. You give the folks out there an in-depth look of what goes on or what goes into yeah. putting this together. You get it no other place, no other way, and you guys bring it to us, and we're proud to have you on. And your tournament is the best tournament in the country. John says that Run, all the time. I say it. John says it all the time. I mean, we can go back to Hoosier country, you know, when, but this is the best tournament by far. And the job you guys do, make it that way. It's amazing. Nice. I just want the people to know how much effort this goes into doing something like this and oh. how much work you put into it. And uh, they should appreciate the work that goes with it. And it shows every weekend, it shows on the courts uh, around Bergen, Cal Bergen County. So thank you very much for coming. Well, on behalf of our, our committee, we really appreciate the work that you guys do and your staff. We love having you at our games. Uh, we like watching it on, on TV or, or on our laptops. Mm. You guys do a wonderful mm. job, and it probably goes a little bit unappreciated, but you do a wonderful job for us, and this, this is terrific. No. It really is. It's we a great enjoy service. It. It, it's something that we look forward to every, f every February, and... Uh, we consider it an honor to come and do your games. You're inviting us there. We don't show up and do it. You invited us. So. And what we do only is because of the people behind us that give us oh the yeah, shots. They're the ones they that make us what job. we are. Yeah. We just love to kid around and do a game. Yeah. That's yeah. our style. So the people in the control room are yelling, That's the shut up and get the next us. segment on. <laughs> I can hear them in my... We, we can believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Next, we're going to have a Paramus Catholic High School. Uh, okay, you can drop your mic. your dad on that. <laughs> Leave me right. out of it. They may want me for something, you know. You're on. Welcome back. Now we have our, uh, our school here. We have some people helping youngsters on the camera. This is uh, Mike Stodos, our coach here. Mike, this is, uh, let's introduce your daughters, your daughters first. I will introduce you because they had them Important on TV. Ones. All okay. right. Can we get them again? 
All right, who, who's okay. this? My That's my nine-year-old. That's Annabella. Okay, She's Annabella. in the third grade. And then we go into have as... And there's Michaela. Okay. Michaela's in the first grade. Okay. Now we got the important people. We'll talk about everybody else. Get the kids. <laughs> you, Mike Dodo, thank you very much. You're the uh, basketball coach at uh, Paramus Catholic High School. Introduce your, your two players for the folks. They'll introduce themselves. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, my name is Jaime Vargas. My name is Jordan Morris. I'm also from Paramus. So, Mike, um, you got to Paramus Catholic about three, four years ago? Some I'm on my third year right third now. Year. When you got to Paramus Catholic, what was the uh, biggest challenge that you saw that you had to take care of first before you could really stop moving? Uh, the year before I got there, they were 2-21, and 21, I think. Um, so I knew I had I was you know had a lot of work to do when I got there. First thing to do we started spring workouts as soon as I was hired. Uh, Jaime was at one, with me when we when I first got hired. He was already at the school, so he could attest to this. We started working out every day in the spring. Um, we kind of weeded out the the kids that weren't buying into the program, and uh, you know it just went from there. You know we started building building the program up. The first year was real rough. You know we had a couple. We had one kid that wasn't. Uh, eligible to play for 30 days. We lost 10 straight games. So we were 0 10 at that point. And, uh, you know, I was second guessing my decision to come to Paramus Catholic. <laughs> but, uh, we, you know, I kept working hard. I kept, you know, telling the players to stick with it. You know, the good things will happen. And then that year we finished out all right. That year I think we won like six, seven, eight games. And then my second year was last year. We had a good core of kids that had returned from the year before. And uh, we made some strides last year. But this year we really come on strong. The team has bought in. I think we have great camaraderie amongst the guys, which is a huge uh, factor mm -hmm. in high school basketball. And uh, we had a luck of you know, a couple transfers coming in as well that helped out tremendously. Jordan transferred in the beginning of last year. Like I said earlier, Jaime was with, uh, with me as soon as I took over the job. He was already here. But um, they've developed you know, tremendously over the last couple of years. Um, last year they both played a little bit of JV and you know sat varsity as well. They put in their time, and now this year it's their time to shine, and they're really stepping up to the plate. When the, I always think that there comes a point, like you get into the Paramus Catholic, you're 0 and 10, but there comes a point somewhere, as you look back now over three years, where the team, the light bulb went on, and the team made the turn. Was it a game? Was it a practice? Was it a yes. time? Was there ever a time like that where you say, that's the point where we began to really get everything? Well, I think when we were 0-10 at that point, I think our first win was uh, at home against DePaul, I believe. Uh, I think so. It was home, it was uh, <coughs> senior night, I think, yeah. and it was our first win at home. All right. Okay, so um, that, the, you know, winning that game and then the kids celebrating the locker room, they had ce were celebrating like they had won the championship. Okay. So I think they enjoyed the taste of winning and, uh, and they wanted it more. So after that game, we started getting a little bit better and better. And like I said, you know, now in the third year, a lot of some of the kids have been with me for three years, but we have, we're lucky enough to get a couple transfers come in. And they've, you know, you know, transitioned into our program smoothly. And the guys have welcomed them in. Most of them knew each other anyhow okay. before they came to Paramus Catholic. And uh, we're having a great year. We're excited nice about the Jamboree. We're excited about... You know, the games we've already <laughs> played, the, our victory last night against St. Joe's, you know, a week and a half ago, we played against Don Bosco and beat them. We've had a few hiccups along the way, but that's just a, you know, a learning process. You know, we got to understand that every night is a game. You know, we're playing great competition and you can't have letdowns, especially playing in the league that we play in and even our, all our independent games. You know, DePaul we lost to in, in uh, East Side the last week and a half. They're very good teams. You know, we, we had a little bit of letdown, and those teams were hungry, and now we're kind of become the hunted. So teams are coming after us, and they're giving us their A game. And we have to make sure we deliver every night as well. Very good. Let me just, again, because I don't know if they got the <coughs> audio, let's introduce the two plays again. Jaime, give us your name again, just so they know it. Yeah. Jaime Vargas from Paramus Catholic Senior. Go ahead. Jordan Morris, Paramus Catholic Senior. Uh, yeah, they gave you the microphone. I don't know if the, uh, the headsets were working. What does it mean to you for the team and oh, let me put it this way. What does it mean to you as a team and a program that you're in the Jamboree? Um, I imagine for my players, they're super excited about this experience. You know, we've talked about it last year a little bit, but we knew it was going to be tough to get in last year. 
uh, especially we had a losing record at the time of the cutoff. We had a bunch of losses to top-notch teams, but we didn't make the cut and we didn't make it in last year. This was one of our goals this year coming in. You know, I had a lot of experience in the Jamboree with my Crestgill teams, and I tried to tell these guys you know, how great it is and what an exciting time it is to be in the Jamboree. Yeah. And I think they're starting to realize it now and uh, know the guys are all excited about being in the Jamboree, being the five seed, and we're looking forward to uh, whoever we play next week. All right, I, I, let, let's give you the same question, yeah. other than how do you look at the Jamboree, how excited you are? I'm extremely excited. <laughs> I've been Prams Catholic all four years, and this is my first time actually experiencing the Jamboree. So, mm. this is like Did you amazing. ever go to a Jamboree game? You ever catch one? No, you I have not. So, it's just your first experience, <coughs> and that's going to be wait. next week. You got to wait a whole week because you got <coughs> you got to buy. So, you'll play next week either at Allendale and or Northern Highlands or at uh, or Tenafly. Yes. But when you go when you go down to the big, say to the big um, uh, gymnasium, whether it's uh, in, in the Hackensack, Hackensack, to me, that's, it's bigger, the people are there. Yes, and knowing this coach, he's one that comes in with the program, and you have to follow his program. And once you listen to him, you become a player. Yes. I've seen him, he's animated, he's in the game every minute. You play his style, or you may be sitting there and saying, maybe I shouldn't be here. But you gotta listen to the coach. Go ahead, Jordan, Go ahead. say a question. <laughs> Um, the Jamboree, I've been there my sophomore year with Dwight Morrow. We played Don Bosco. Uh, it was really much of a just sit and watch. I didn't get to play in it, but to still see the energy and the fans, the whole arena lit up, it was a pretty good experience. It's like a whole experience. county comes together. Uh, there's all types, there's all kinds of uh, reporters there. There's television. We're there. It's, it's, everybody makes it big, and it just seems much, much bigger, and uh, you just have to play play your game. Now. Last night you had a game. I, mean, I, I think you may want to talk a little bit about it. Um, uh, the yeah, three of you. I want each one of you to tell me. I, I don't know what happened last yeah, night. Can we you tell me? There. Let me know, tell everybody what happened. To fill me in here. It was, uh, you know, it was an intense <laughs> game. There were moments that you know we didn't look very good, and um, we were down at one point. I think 13 points, and uh, you know I was getting frustrated, and I'm sure these guys are frustrated as well. And we just kept with it, you know, we stuck to it. We kept working <coughs> hard. Finally, we got some shots to drop. We started, you know, stepping up our defense a little bit. Um, we had a couple big threes to, you know, cut that lead down. And then we just made some big plays we needed to. We got the ball inside to our big man, Derek Bueno. Uh, he's been doing, you know, a great job for us all year. He's six six, junior center, averaging 18 points, close to 15 rebounds a game. And uh, we got him the ball a few times down low. That opened up the perimeter game for Nico Ruffin to hit a three, Jaime hit a three. You know, Jordan ended up with 22 points on the game. Um, and everybody contributes. That's the great thing about our team, that, you know, if one guy's not having a great night, the next guy steps up. But uh, last night in that fourth quarter, I think all our guys, you know, knew what was on, this, on the line here. We wanted to beat Joes, and they really uh, stepped it up in that fourth quarter. And Jaime hit the game-winning shot <laughs> with about four seconds left. Uh -oh. It was 58-58. Uh, he got the ball about mid-court, dribbled to the three-point line, pulled up, you know, ice water in his veins, and just <laughs> drained the three. Um, and then uh, the rest was just us celebrating on the court and <laughs> enjoying the win. It was an ugly win, <laughs> but uh, we'll take an ugly win no. over a pretty loss. So talk about that shot, uh, how you see it now uh, from the entire play. How did, it, how did it unfold? I saw it. I got a quick view. Bobby Maines, who works with us, he gave me a quick view. I don't know where he got it, but we got the – it wasn't, wasn't as clear as I wish it could be. It would have had it tonight, but he sh I saw it. So tell me what happened in that, uh, um, on that play when you hit the three. Go ahead, Jaime. I just turned around. I was wide open, <laughs> dribble, pulled it up. It's like you were like nice in practice, form. huh? Yeah, nice yeah. form. Yes, sir. Oh, beautiful. Felt good. Yeah, it Nothing just felt that. amazing. Nothing but that. Yes, sir. It didn't bounce around that no. switch. Did it, oh. When it left your fingers, it was good, right? Yeah. At that point, what did you do? Besides jump up in the air about 14 <laughs> feet high. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got back on defense. It was, oh, I, I still oh, didn't yeah. hear the buzzer, I so said, I was like, yeah. get instead of game on. I better get back in the right <laughs> four seconds. Who's the, first, who's the first one you saw after you shot, or you don't remember who you saw? I remember seeing Jordan. He <laughs> ran towards me. I'm like, bro, let's get back on defense. <laughs> oh. uh, it was just amazing. Very good. Get back on defense. You never know. They can come back. Yeah. That had to, that, that was a real 
great win for the program, I, I think. And you did it at the right time, coming into the Jamboree. Right. Uh, I think our biggest win was our first one against Don Bosco, at Don Bosco. That was our first real statement win, signature win against uh, you know, the big three, I was calling them at the time. I think we can include ourselves now in the big four with them. And even, you know, DePaul's not in our county, but they're a great team as well. But um, that win against uh, Don Bosco, I think it gave our guys some, some confidence and um, let them know that we can play with these guys. You know, if we come to play and we're ready to get after it and we do the little things, that we can play with anybody in our, in our league, in our county, and in the state as well. So tell me, the Bosco game, your impressions? I know it was a while ago. Your impressions of going up to Bosco, the gym is, is really funny. You only got one side you could right. sit. Everybody is on top of you. <coughs> They're like, they right here. It can, very, can be very daunting. You're playing a, a team that's outstanding, got a tremendous uh, history. Talk about that game and what you remember about it. What I remember is uh, us coming out fast, flying, everybody hitting shots, playing together as a team, and uh, being the better team in that game. Don Bosco, they, uh, they were there with us, but uh, towards the end, we had to slow it down, run our game, and then pull it out. Jaime, I mean, same thing for you. Uh, what, what do you remember about that? Because when we saw that you beat Don Bosco in the, at Don Bosco, the word was, wow. <laughs> I just remember my team playing together. When we stay together, we could be anybody we want. I remember having the bench, the energy was all there. Everybody was flying around. Even had some bench players hit some big shots, like Miles Morales. That, was, that huge three hit at the end, that gave us all the energy, like, okay, we're winning this game. Is that the mindset both of you have, that if you play your game, you could beat anybody? You, you, you really feel that no matter what, that if you play your game, you, no one's going to beat you on any given night? If we play our game within the system, play together as a team, a brotherhood, unity, feel like nobody could stop us. That's Put a key word, coach. <laughs> right, right. They're learning. Key They're word. Learning. <laughs> I, I think That's perfect. I think they bought into the program. They have. They have. <laughs> There's moments where they, you know, they still, yeah, we exactly. still butt heads a little bit, but that's normal. But that's you know, good. they're teenage boys and they think they're right all the time. But um, mm -hmm. you know, they're they've really bought into the program. They're doing a great job. Oh, yeah, they're both our captains this year. Jaime's kind of our glue guy. He's not going to stand out in the stats and the scoring line. Yeah. But he's taken you know charge after charge all season long and last year as well when he got varsity minutes. Um, he sacrifices everything for the team. I'm so happy and proud of him for last night. He really deserved that moment, <laughs> that big three to win the game at St. Joe's. And uh, you know it just shows. I said it to the team afterward. You know, he put in the hard work. He waited his time. You know he could have packed it in last year when I told him. You know, I said, Jaime, I think I'm going to move you down to JV. I don't want you playing more minutes until getting experience and getting better. You know, and some kids, they don't want to do that, and they pack it in, really. And we've had a couple kids quit because of that. Um, but Jaime, he did what he, you know, the coach asked him, and he got better and better in the offseason. He worked hard. And then this year, he's, you know, he's having a great season. And, um, you know, all the guys are, and they've kind of bought in now. And we're just enjoying the ride. It's a great ride. How, I guess everybody at the school is kind of excited. I'm not, I know I was talking to Jimmy Avitable in the office right, there and right. Scott, DAD, and he said the school is kind of very uh, high now because everybody's doing well. And they mentioned <coughs> the uh, the basketball team the, the, that you guys are really doing well. And so the, is the school getting him back? <coughs> There's a lot of. I want to call it electricity. Well, I'm going to let you guys, t they'll tell you about the school atmosphere, but I'll tell you, <coughs> you know, when we first started, you know, when I first started three years ago, we were laughing stock. You know, the, I know these guys' classmates would make fun of them, um, and it was hard. It was hard as a coach. I had come from a winning program at Cresskill, and it was hard for me. It was hard for these guys. You know, they were in, out there working every day, but it was, you know, we were taking our lumps. And um, now this year, you know, I'm sure the school is, uh, you know, is electrified. But all around the county, everybody's kind of, you know, been talking about us. And, it, you know, it just shows that you work hard, you do the right things, and, uh, you know, you're coachable, and, you know, good things can happen. You know, the, we've obviously had the luck. We have some very good players as well. You know, we, I mentioned our guy, you know, Derek Bueno. We have another guy named Nico Ruffin, a uh, 5'10 guard that can really shoot the lights out on any given night. He had two huge threes last night to help us win that game as well and uh, we have a couple role players that are doing a great job you know Jaime mentioned Miles Morales our backup center we got another forward Mike um, Mike that's doing great for us uh, as well 
and uh, he had two, you know, a big layup last night. He took a charge as well. So he's doing a great job for us. And we have a couple other guys that come off the bench too. So the program's really, um, you know, really doing well and thriving. And I'll let these guys tell you about the atmosphere at school. Go ahead, let's hear it. I mean, then we'll go to John. You go first. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. Go to school, everyone like, hey, man, have a good game today, or you'll go win last night. It just feels great. It feels way different than the How years about the before. girls? The girls are uh, yeah. good. Uh, uh, no, yeah, Catholic has boys <laughs> and girls. You yeah. don't talk about girls during the season, right? No, no, no. Nobody no, 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 knows that, right? Strictly so business. They're not allowed to go out, right? right, right, right. Yeah. Stay home. <laughs> got to stay home. We got to right. study and yes. go to bed with the study, ball. Study in basketball, sure basketball, and the girls can wait till mm -hmm. June and July, right? Yes, sir. You guys play in the summertime? You play a lot of ball in the summer? Yes. All year round. No breaks. Play all year round. You play around. You got, you got a good program there. You're in the Jamboree. Um, I remember the guys were in the Jamboree years ago when we were doing it forever. Uh, they, they played very well, um, got to a semifinal final. I think one year they, they won this uh, yeah. Jamboree Our one year. So you don't know. Justin Harris was yeah. on that team. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I, I know he's been preaching to these guys for two, three years now about you know the hard work and doing the right things. And then uh, you know good things will happen if you do that. And Justin's he's a great coach as well. We're, we're lucky to have him. But he was on that team, I think back in 2010 maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It it's in that area. Yeah, yes. I lose track. We did. Three, we've done 26 of these championships. So I lose. I lose a little. Uh, I lose a little he's track. He's a great role model for these guys as yeah. well. So it's great to see a team like this. It's always nice to see coaches. Always nice to see a coach go into a program like you, and the program is. Two and twenty, or five and fifteen, or so, and then within a year or two, the team comes back. It's it just like you're building it from the bottom up, and it, and it's it, it's good to see that. It's good for the school. It's good for Bergen County basketball. And you did a nice job. We know you from Cresco. Thank you, thank you guys. Yeah, I remember <laughs> you guys coming to our games oh, West, and the jamboree. When you were down there, you, you heard coaching every second. Yep. He was there on the kids, and if, if they didn't do the right thing. Well, there was somebody you don't else coming right guys. in. You don't have to tell there these was guys. no fooling around. They all believed, <laughs> and they built in the system. And then after he left, they had a team down there with the Croatian. Yes, they Luka had the Radovich. opportunity. Yeah, I had coached those guys <coughs> all the way through. It was kind of bittersweet to leave before their senior year, but it was time for me to move yeah. on. And uh, I'm happy with the decision I yeah. made. You know, I'm very happy with the program. Happy with Paramus Catholic. And uh, you know the future is very bright. We can see it on your face. Yeah. You don't right. have to say too much. You got <laughs> you have a you have a big smile on right. your face, and it seems hey. like you're very happy. What's your next game? We play Tuesday against Wayne Hills. Okay. So the boys are going to be off this weekend. We're going to go scout Dwight Morrow and Leonia tomorrow in the in the first round of Jamboree, and then with you know we got our two league games this week. But we're really looking forward to uh, the Jamboree next Saturday. Yeah, next Saturday you play, and then when you win, you play the following Sunday. And then after that, one game at a time. One game yeah. at a time. Game and at then a time. remember, you got the other games in between. Right, right. You gotta, you, I'm sure you told them there were other games. He did tell you yeah. while playing other games other than the <laughs> Jamboree, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> right, we didn't talk much yesterday about the Jamboree. We wanted to, you know, talk more about St. Joe's. I yeah. said, let's wait till after yeah. tonight's game, then we'll discuss the Jamboree. But that's a hard part, too. You, you have your other games as well. Yeah. You can't just forget about mm -hmm. those games. So you got to prepare for the Jamboree, and I also got to keep them focused. <laughs> On their, their, you know, the regular season games this yeah. week, we play Tuesday and Thursday. So you're getting used to this. So. You just answered the question I was <laughs> going to ask you. Right. How did you get ready for St. Joe's after you got the word that you were a five seed in the Jamboree? Everybody was jumping around, hugging each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, the messages all went out that we were the five seed. We were pretty <laughs> excited about that. Yeah. But we knew, you know, we had Joe's the next night, and that was, you know, our first priority. And uh, we stayed focused. You know, we had a first rough couple quarters there in the beginning of that game last night. But uh, we pulled through at the end, and, uh, you know, a W is a W. Well, you beat two of the teams already, right? You beat St. Joe's, and you beat Don Bosco. Now, you still got Bergen. Bergen, we haven't <coughs> beat them but yet. But Bergen, hey, they have four guards and one big guy. No, That's the know. way I look at it. If they play... In their system, and they play well. That's they could the beat key. anybody at any given you day. Gotta listen to right. this man right here. Yeah, right. Hey, man, <laughs> straight from the horse's mouth, both of them there. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta shoot better. You gotta play defense. You gotta do everything that box you've been out. shown. Box, 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 box out. Box we, uh, out. Right. We're, we're gonna see you. Defense, right, defense. Right. We're gonna see you down at the during the jamboree because we're gonna be at most of the games coming down, right. and uh, we look forward to seeing you. 
I want to thank you for taking time out for coming up. We really enjoy you coming up here and talking to us. Gives us a chance at WCTV to get the, um, what am I looking at? The monitor. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh here we are. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what they want to show me. Oh, look who's oh, running the show look now. Who's running the show, yeah. your daughter. Wait hey. a minute, they were doing cameras. Now they got to wave to daddy. <laughs> wave. Wave to daddy on TV, girl. <laughs> <laughs> They are cuties. <laughs> hey. <laughs> They're saying, look at the monitor. Now I know why you look at well, the monitor. Well, they're busy. They don't want to make a mistake. Well, no, See that? They're right. listening to what they're told what to they do. What they're doing, they're running the show. They're hitting the there buttons to run the show. But I want to thank you. Thank no, you for thank bringing you your daughters up to help thank us. Thank you for having us. Gentlemen, thank you. It was a great game last night. Congratulations. Thank um, you. Look forward to seeing you in the Jamboree, and thank you for coming. You make this with the coaches uh, and a very in-depth look at the Jamboree, what the Jamboree is all about. And that's what we try to do. No one, no one does it like we could do it here with your help and the coaches' help and the uh, the committee's help. So thank you all so very much Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. So we hope you enjoyed today's show. We uh, we tried to bring you as much as we could about the jamboree, right, John? Absolutely. Hey, it's the best tournament in the country. And it'll start in about I've said uh, it. 14 <laughs> hours or so. The jamboree will start. And uh, we will have another run at the 64 Jamboree, which will end at FDU on the 28th of February. So for the, the coat for the Jamboree committee, come up here, Paul Pluglis, uh, Wookie Corcoran, and uh, John Ryan. For Mike Dodo and the players from uh, Paramus Catholic, Jaime and Jordan. And of course, our directors, <laughs> producers. Look at those Look at this. Down uh -huh. here, who we, couldn't be with, when we couldn't be on without them. We say we hope you enjoy the show. Thanks, Fred and Shane. Emily, Ida, and Ricky, and Nick are in the back working. Thank everyone. This is an operation that takes a lot of people to do. So for John Fancola, this is Larry Ferry saying thank you and good night, everyone.